Alright, so Destiny 2 dropped about a week ago now, and if you follow me on Twitter, shameless plug by the way, then you probably saw that I recently beat the main campaign for Destiny 2. And you also probably agreed with me when I said that the campaign was actually pretty good, especially when compared to the main campaign for the original Destiny. It had decent character development, played around with your emotions, and had a pretty decent villain. I kinda wish Bungie let our Guardian talk instead of having them go the Legend of Zelda route, but whatever, it's a nitpick at best. That having been said though, the ending of the campaign, while no less awesome, does have a lot of people asking questions about Gaul, the Traveler, and the future of the Destiny storyline. So in this video, I'm going to be breaking all that stuff down and hopefully figuring out where Bungie's taking the direction of the Destiny storyline in the future. Before I get into all that though, I just want to point out that I'm going to be covering major spoilers for Destiny 2, so if you haven't beaten the campaign yet, or if you're a PC player and you haven't played the game at all yet, then you should probably click away and watch one of my other videos instead. I'll put a random link on screen, you can check that one out if you want. Alright, so after we finally defeated Gaul in the campaign, we see Gaul turning into a molten looking version of himself and yelling at the Traveler before it reawakens and kills him. In doing so, the Traveler destroys the cage Gaul put it in and releases an explosion of light. After the credits, we then see a wide shot of that explosion of light we saw earlier going past a few different locations we've seen before in Destiny 1, including Mars, the Reef, Saturn, and the Dreadnought, and finally out past the Milky Way into the darkness of the wider universe. While the light continues to expand, it eventually passes by a couple mysterious pyramid-looking ships, which then suddenly activate and begin making their way towards Earth. Now, of course, that's definitely awesome, but what are we looking at? What happened to Gaul? What does the light mean for the Destiny universe, and what's the deal with those ships? First, let's start with Gaul and the Traveler. Now if you played through the game, you'll know that Gaul stole light from the Traveler and used it during your fight with him to pull off super moves all the Guardian subclasses had access to. It's because he stole all this light that he was able to temporarily resurrect himself as a being made up of pure light. This is the exact situation everybody was worried about earlier in the game. If Gaul becomes this godlike entity, he's pretty much unbeatable, the game's over. But thankfully we didn't have to take him on on our own, because the Traveler finally woke back up, destroyed the prison Gaul put it in, and took him out. But why though? Why'd the Traveler only just now start up again? Remember, it's been idle this entire time throughout Destiny 1 and all the way up until this point in Destiny 2. Well, honestly, I think it's because of a couple different reasons. First and foremost, self-defense. Remember, Gaul, empowered by the light, was believed to be pretty much unbeatable. There's a very good chance that had the Traveler not woken up, he would have killed you and completely drained the Traveler of its light, killing it in the process. So the Traveler must have realized that using its power to get rid of him was the only way to go. On top of that, I feel like the Traveler only just now gained enough of its light back to start doing stuff. Remember, the Traveler was damaged during the collapse. It needed time to heal and mend itself, which really only started after we took out the Vex in the Black Garden during the end fight in the original Destiny game. Have you heard of the Black Garden? We've heard the legend. The greatest threat to us all lies there. Where these machines are born. Find the Black Garden. Rip out its heart. Only then will your traveler begin to heal. Considering that was a somewhat recent event, it's not hard to imagine that it took a little while for the Traveler to get back up and running. Alright, so now that we've talked about Gaul, we can talk a little bit about that explosion of light and what that means about the mysterious ships hanging around outside the galaxy. So I'm pretty sure it's obvious that this new expansion of the light signals the beginning of a new Golden Age, right? I mean, it's been said before in Destiny 1 that the original Golden Age started when the Traveler spread its light out across the galaxy, allowing humans to live longer, use new technologies, and travel to other planets. Now that the Traveler's woken up again, I'm thinking this is what allowed allows humanity to spread out again, and in real life will be the excuse to give us players access to new locations and weaponry. Given what we see in the cutscene, this new golden age will also be the excuse to bring those weird ships down to Earth. But what are they though? Well, I'm thinking these really aren't ships, but they're really the physical embodiment of the darkness, similar to how the Traveler is the physical embodiment of the light. I mean, it's definitely not a coincidence that these things only activated after the Traveler woke back up, right? Now I know game director Luke Smith mentioned in an interview with Kotaku that Bungie originally had no clue what the darkness was really supposed to be when they were coming up with Destiny 1, and mentioned that Bungie was writing the idea of the darkness out of the main campaign for Destiny 2, stating, You will not yeah. be talking about the darkness in the game. And your explanation was, I believe, something about how it's like not time to reveal that, or you're focusing on something else, correct? It was yep. That. Uh, tell me the truth. Is it because none of you have no have any idea what the so darkness actually means? I think that at a point, just totally candidly, we had no idea what okay. it was. Okay. Straight up, we had Good. no clue. I, I'm glad you're being candid. Yeah, we today. had we didn't we didn't know what it was, and we we for a period, I, I, I mean for a period, we chose we we're gonna lump all the races, and you see this in the tooltips in the game, uh -huh. minions of the darkness, uh -huh. minion, and, and we had taken all the races and just said like ah they'll just be the darkness. Okay. But that's that's like not what the that's not what the IP deserves. It's okay. like literally not. I'm glad and, you're admitting and, this. And, and so what what we're doing doing with Destiny 2 is we are deliberately telling a story okay. about the light and what it means to be chosen. Okay. And as such, like we're in the process of like 
removing the term darkness from the game. This is the reason why when you die, the screen doesn't read the darkness has consumed you anymore, like in Destiny 1, but rather your light fades away. That having been said, I don't think the darkness was completely erased from Destiny lore like some people seem to think, but rather that Bungie simply kept from referring to it directly in Destiny 2, just so that they had enough ambiguity and time to give the darkness a proper look and a more concrete description, both of which I think we'll definitely see either in a future piece of Destiny 2 DLC or in the main campaign of Destiny 3 if Bungie really decides they want to stretch the mystery out that long. How do we know this? Well, let's take a look at the evidence. For one thing, it's been said multiple times throughout both Destiny 1 and 2 that the darkness and the Traveler are mirrors of each other, polar opposites that need each other to balance the universe out. In the original Destiny, there's a couple different quotes you can hear from Xur, one of which being, your Traveler has a dark mirror. Speaking of mirroring one another, in the lore entry for the exotic ship Symmetry Flight, we get a quote from the warlock Ulan Tan, himself a believer that the Traveler and the darkness are essentially yin and yang, that reads, I propose a simple experiment. Look around. You see see light, you see darkness. There could not be one without the other. They are two sides of the same coin. If it is true for those Newtonian echoes, why would it not be true of the purest paracausal forms? Therefore, I conclude, the reason you persecute me is not because of the symmetry. It's because of the truth beyond this truth, the truth which you most dread. If we could destroy darkness, but we had to give up our light to do so, how many of us would make that trade? Then there's the lore entry for the exotic helmet Eye of Another World, which specifically refers to, quote, our one true enemy as a pyramid. The entry reads, what if I told you that eons beyond the void lie worlds that do yearn to aid in our struggle? What if I told you there is a way to grant them passage into your mind to let them guide your eye against our one true enemy, that they would have told me that the dusk of the pyramid draws nigh. Would you believe me? Pyramids? Dusk? Now what all have we seen that maybe fits that description? That's right, those weird objects hanging around outside our galaxy. And speaking of pyramids, let's check out that opening cutscene for Destiny 2. During the intro, we see another version of the summed up story of the Traveler, the Golden Age, and the effect the darkness had on both. Watch it again and you'll notice that on the surface of the Traveler, the cutscene specifically showed the darkness as a triangle-shaped shadow. Interesting. And then, probably the most damning piece of evidence yet, we've actually seen these things before, all the way back before Destiny 1 came out. Take a look at these rough sketches of some of the main enemy races in Destiny featured during a talk at the 2013 Game Developers Conference. In it, you'll notice depictions of the Vex, the Fallen, the Cabal, the Hive, and a mysterious fifth alien race. We've never seen or heard anything about this race since, but you'll notice that they happen to be paired up with the same weird pyramid ship-like things from the ending of Destiny 2. We saw these same ships in another piece of concept art featured earlier in the same talk, this time with just a tiny bit more detail. Not only do these things look identical to the ships we saw at the end of the game, but they're also clearly flying around at cloud level on some unknown planet. And finally, going back to the Kotaku interview, if we skip forward a little bit, there's a moment when Smith mentions the following. Because uh, when we are going to talk about darkness uh, next, we need you to know what it is and have a plan for it. And we do. So there you go. It definitely seems like those pyramid things are the darkness we've been hearing about since the beginning, and Bungie finally seems all set to reveal the darkness properly at some point in the future. When that's going to be, who knows. All I know is I can't wait to finally see what all the darkness is about and what new race of creatures we'll have to take on to shut it down. But anyways guys, that's my take on the ending of Destiny 2's campaign. If you guys like this video or you have your own theories about Destiny 2's ending you want to throw out there, then go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I will see you all next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to click that like button, maybe leave me a comment while you're at it, and go ahead and click that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to check out any of my social media pages. I've got a Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram. All those links are going to be in the description below. And I've also got my last video right there in the middle of your screen, so if you want to check that out, go ahead and click it, check it out. Alright, and I will see you all next time.